So joining me now is Misha Dola, Professor of Wireless Communications from King's College London. Thanks for speaking to us. So we know now that the communication systems on board the plane were deliberately disabled. Can you explain to us what would have taken place on board the plane, I'm talking on a technical level, to basically shut these systems down? Well, I'm not a plane expert, so I'm a communications expert. So but how difficult it would have been to, to disable those, those right. systems? Right, so w we know they stopped functioning, so we don't really know whether they were switched off. That's a presumption. So the you got you got a few communication systems on plane, so you got the, the voice type of communication from the plane to the ground. You got the transponder systems, you know, which where the radar transmits a signal and the plane has to respond with the ID. You've got data communication systems. So to switch off the transponder and the voice is probably doable, but the data stuff is pretty tough. So somebody must have known what's happening there. And apparently uh, this, the, the airplane was still transmitting some satellite data. So something was still on out of the reach. That's right, because the last satellite signal received from the plane had been sent somewhere along one of two possible points. We know either between Kazakhstan and northern Thailand or Indonesia. And, and the Indian Ocean, why right. is it, why are they having so much difficulty pinpointing the exact location of that signal? Yeah. How does all this work? That's a good question. So what happened is that these planes have an automated type of data systems reporting down to the ground what's happening, and this particular one on the Boeing 77 was satellite enabled. So a little beacon was sent every hour saying, you know, I'm still here, the plane is alive, and uh, probably some technical data was embedded as well, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, the problem was that no GPS data was actually transmitted, otherwise they would have known where the plane is. It was just a satellite ping saying, I'm, I'm alive. Now they're probably using two satellites to figure out where the, where, you know, where the plane was, so they're using the strength, the field strength of the GPS signal, uh, sorry, of the satellite signal to determine the position and if you do the triangulation exercise, you figure out that a wide area would be in the northern side and the wide area would be in the southern side. That's why it kind of polarized nine to two areas. So that's the crucial point here, is that yes, there, was, there was a ping, there was a signal being transmitted, yes. but without yes. a GPS, impossible to locate exactly. where it was coming so from. no GPS coordinates in there, yes. Regardless of which of these two arcs we speak about, the two corridors, mm -hmm. the two possible paths that the plane would have taken, regardless of which one, um, it, 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 it would have found itself uh, traveling across. Both of those areas are heavily militarized. Is it surprising that it, it didn't arouse more attention despite the system as being shut down? Yes, yeah, so the northern area is definitely strategically really militarized. So I would say they probably should have picked it up unless the plane was flying very low. So you can literally uh, kind of fly below the radar but the military radio is very ca capable, so they should have picked it up. So I suspect it's probably rather than the southern hemispheres or along the equator in the southern side where there's no, not so much radar coverage, really. Misha, what do you make of the pace of the investigation so far? Well, it's, it's probably been slow, but I presume they're holding back a lot of data because it's difficult to analyze technical data. So it's, the data is not coming in a clear format saying the plane is here or there. They're kind of using you know, field strength, uh, physical data now to kind of do some calculus and figure out where the plane could be. Misha Dola, Professor of Wireless Communications at King's College London, thank you for coming in and thank sharing you your expertise with us today.